Hi, my name is Robert. Please read the comments in the about section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please like, share, and subscribe. I hope you found what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. Time to get a couple things done on Panther. I'm going to start out by replacing the spring on the wastegate actuator, this Ford wastegate actuator. I got three different ones here. I'm going to put in the green one, I think. No. Heck, I got to look, see which one I'm supposed to put in. I'm supposed to put in the one that goes for 15 pounds. Then I'm going to replace this seat belt in here so that I can have that done. And then I'm going to run to the junkyard and try to take care of a thing or two. So let's pop the hood and get this wastegate actuator spring replaced. Wastegate actuator spring. I don't know if I can get that off without taking any of this other stuff off or not. I'm going to pull that pin see if I can get at those two bolts over there and see if I can pull that out. I guess I got to pull that vacuum line off too. I don't think I can get that other bolt out without a swivel or some other tool. End up taking my intake tube off. It's hard to reach that thing and screw without it. Ah, the heck's going on now? Oh, it's under that. Had to get it up out of there. I think I'm gonna leave the dang tube on it since it's got a zip tie on there. And I don't know if that zip tie handy. So here it is. Wastegate actuator. I should be able to replace the spring in there, they claim. So let me get my tool to open this up. I had to be careful opening that up and replace the spring in there. Let me see what color I need. Next thing I'm going to do is pull these screws out of here. I may actually have to remove this shaft off of here. So I'm going to get a tool, hold this, break that nut loose there, which should be 10 millimeter, remove that stuff from the shaft, and then I'm going to go ahead and take this loose and it should all come apart. These are actually three millimeter screws, but the T15 torque will get it loose. This, I held this with that adjustable jaw, and this is an 11, but you can probably get it off with a 12 or an adjustable jaw wrench. I went on ahead and counted the turns. It was 18 turns to get that thing off the end. Now I'm going to spin that off, then I'm going to open that up. Before you take these screws out, you want to make sure you know the orientation of your vacuum hose. I got that screw there lined up with this vacuum hose. So when I take this off, I want to put it back in this orientation, which is basically 11 o'clock for me. So make sure you get that set where you want, or you can move it around to a different orientation if that'll help you access your vacuum hoses better. Pulling that last screw out, man, that thing was forcing my hand open. This is how it looks. This ball fits in there where the pressure fits in. I don't know if that's a piston or not. But anyway, you go ahead and pull this out through the hole. And now you have that. Then you pull that rubber thing off and your spring will come off of there. This does not move. It's kind of pressed on the shaft. Next, you want to grab this. I was able to grab it with my hand. I pulled the spring back a little bit with my fingers. I grabbed this with my hand and I started to twist it on that shaft. And I started to twist it. It started to slide down the shaft. Now I'm going to go ahead and slide this off the rest of the way. And then I'll pull the spring off. Put the yellow spring on because it's for 15 PSI. And then I'll slide this back on. As you can see, I got the yellow spring on. I got this slip back up there. The bend is holding it in, so I'm going to go ahead and push it through there and then lock that on top and start a couple of screws. It's a stronger spring. If you got somebody to help you hold it while you start a couple of screws, that'd be great, but don't lose any screws. It's best to do this stuff on a workbench. I twist this back on. I spun this down about 18 turns. Now I'm going to bolt this back on. Once I get this bolted on, I'm going to go ahead and slip this over the closed wastegate actuator. And then I'm going to lift it back off, turn it in two complete turns, pull it out, hook it over the wastegate actuator, and that'll hold the wastegate closed until it needs boost. All right, I adjusted the wastegate actuator. 
cranked it out till it slid over the closed wastegate rod. Then I cranked it back in two full turns, pulled it over the pin. It was hard to pull it with that yellow spring in there. I actually had to use a tool to pull it over the pin. And then I stuck the set pin in there. Now I'm gonna put my intake tube back on and I'll be good to go. I'm all done with that. Hopefully that spring will give me the pressure I need to get the boost I want. I really want 17, 18 pounds of boost. That's gonna be plenty with this turbo I got. So I have a few springs here, extra springs. The next one after the yellow is the blue. So if the yellow don't work, I have to put this blue one on. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.